All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jesse. I am the founder of Bloom, and we are a decentralized identity and credit scoring protocol. And today, I'm here to talk about uh, something that most of you guys probably already know, which is that the entire history of you is being sold. There is thousands of computers, tens of thousands of companies that are mining your personal information, pooling it up and selling it in giant data centers. This happens continuously all day long, nonstop. So in this five minute talk, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how bad this problem actually is, what practical solutions blockchain brings to actually address the problem that your entire history is being sold, and then where we are today, what companies are currently adopting this, and then what technology is available to actually address this problem. So this is a massive problem. There are 10,000 companies in the United States alone that are registered sellers of your personal data, that actually sell data to the bureaus. We're talking about your bank statements, your utility bills, your identity documents, your social security information, everything you do, your online patterns, everything you do is being masked and sold and it's not even kept securely. We've seen what happened in the Equifax hack where they leaked the data of over 150 million Americans, and the data leak problem is only getting worse. If you ask most security experts, they say if data is stored in a central repository, it's not a matter of if it will get hacked, it's a matter of when it will get hacked. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Data that is stored centrally is exposed, and the problem is getting worse. No one is immune, even Facebook, uh, had a data leak recently. And it's not even that these bureaus are bad at storing it, they are also bad at understanding it. The data problem has bias. In China, your political affiliation influences your credit score. In the United States, whether you check your credit score makes it go down. And these things are like mathematically proven not to matter, but it doesn't matter because central companies are interpreting data. Huge problem, huge problem. So. Obviously, the decentralized world presents a solution. So I talked about the failures, but where can blockchain help? How can blockchain stop this egregious misuse of data? Well, we are actually in a remarkably lucky time period because GDPR, the European uh, Data Act that, kept, that makes it so that you can't store personal information, the California Data Protection Act, all of the Senate action that's happening, the global world, the Fortune 500s, nobody wants to be the next Equifax. They are actively pursuing blockchain solutions today, right now, to make sure that their data is kept securely. So here's a few principles. One, users must own their data. Users need to be the custodian of their own data. If the user owns the data, the user can decide how it's shared. That means local device storage on Bloom, we store the data right on the user's local device. There's obviously other methods of doing this, IPFS or any sort of local storage can accomplish the same feat. Limiting access. Raw information is a killer. Limiting access to raw information is a absolute requirement of secure data sharing. On Bloom, we don't uh, actually, we have multiple mechanisms to share data, but the user is responsible to trigger that sharing, and you don't need to share the full raw information. You can just share the fact that you're over 21 or that your passport's been validated. You don't actually have to share the raw information. That's a series of Merkle proofs. Um, we, have, we make this easy. If any of you guys actually want to develop this, this is an open source protocol. It's obviously uh, easy to get started. We have a builder so that you can actually build the system to start integrating this. Data reusability is another critical component, making the data reusable and low cost reusability, but then also making it easy to get the data onto users' local device, gamifying the experience, putting it in an app experience. We have over 100,000 users, 30,000 on-chain users that have completed their data onboarding. So good UX is working. And then last, where is the future going? You know, we've seen recently Tim Cook go on a tweet storm about maintaining users' privacy and maintaining data. We see a lot of thought leaders in this space. And as I mentioned, Fortune 500s are looking to adopt this technology to Day. Bloom's protocol is open source. Anyone can sell these deals, but we just signed a deal with the BMW to actually implement Bloom's open source protocol in the BMW lending experience for their 500,000 plus loans a year. And we actually 
I'm just announcing this now, but we also just signed a deal with American Express in 17 countries to implement Bloom's open source protocol to actually apply for loans and validate that information in more than 17 countries. But it is not just Bloom. You guys have the ability to sell these same deals. The time is now. GDPR and compliance has opened up the gateway for blockchain businesses to actually sell into Fortune 500s. We're not doing anything special, well, but we have the same access to the same tools that you guys have, and the regulatory environment has paved the way to change the future of data. Uh, my name's Jesse. Again, I'm the founder of Bloom. Uh, we've been working on this research for quite some time. My co-founders st founded Stanford Bitcoin Group. We studied computer science at Stanford, and we are really, really big on protecting user data, maintaining user privacy, making that data reusable, and creating a future where your data is not mined and sold. We're Bloom. Thank you, guys.